once we recognize that the heart of all organic chemistry is electrostatic interactions, that attraction and repulsion between positive and negative charges, it then becomes clear that we could analyze any OCHEM problem by just looking at how the electrons and nuclei want to behave. But the issue is that when you get really large molecules and systems containing multiple different species, it becomes very impractical to do that. And so instead, we have developed different ways that we can simplify reactions and look at which pieces are going to be the major players. So a lot of OCHEM is about finding quick and efficient ways to take complicated systems and simplify them. And when we remember that we always want to find the species that have the most attractions because those are the ones that can overcome those outer layer electrons repelling each other, then we realize that what we're really looking for is how do we find sources that deliver either charged or partially charged species? How do we recognize those in a greater context? And so we'll go through various sources that can yield these charged and partially charged species. And those include things like functional groups, salts, a lot of times where you see a sodium or potassium, for example, that's delivering a negatively charged species within the setting of a salt. We have acids and bases, electronegativity, nucleophiles and electrophiles, and reducing and oxidizing agents. These are all charged species that oftentimes create the electrostatic motivation that can overcome that initial barrier to any reaction happening. And so we'll go through different ways to recognize the major sources that yield those charged and partially charged species. And a lot of times those are the primary players in your OCHEM environment. And then once you've found those, once you've found your very charged species that are attracted to each other enough to overcome that barrier, the next thing you're looking for then is what will happen? What are the other factors that can influence the reaction? And in organic chemistry, there are a lot of different pieces that can do that. You have to look at hindrance, the steric hindrance and electron structural repulsion that can often prevent certain species from interacting with each other. We'll look at leaving groups, which are things that are comfortable disappearing and taking their electrons with them. We'll look at inductive effects, which involve electron donating and withdrawing groups. Electron delocalization, which you're probably more familiar with as resonance, but which also involves conjugated systems and conjugation. Stereochemistry can play a big role, how the shape shapes these interactions. Tautomerization, things that will exist at an equilibrium between two different structures. How temperature and thermodynamics can influence these reactions. Different types of bonds, whatever solvent you're in the proximity, how close two species are to each other, and other special cases. All of these are different things that can influence the way that a system will behave and which interaction is most likely to occur. And so once you grasp that organic chemistry is all about those electrostatic interactions, then we can find a way to simplify it by looking at what sources give us the charged species that are most likely to interact first. And one thing you'll find is that almost always looking for the most charged species in an environment will tell you that that's going to be a significant player and it tells you how the environment is likely going to look once it's left on its own. And then we'll look at once we've found those species that are going to interact, what other factors could shape the way that these different substrates behave. And so all of these different factors at certain times and in certain environments can influence the end result of an organic chemistry environment. And so we'll be going through these piece by piece and looking at the major ways that you can simplify a problem and then quickly tackle it and figure out what is most likely to occur.